Absolutely. So their issue, I, 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 going back to your first point, I spoke with one of their engineers about the structural viability of it, and he said that the, the bridge was designed for the old steam engines, which are like five times the weight of the, the new diesel engines. Okay. So he said it's way, way over-designed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, it looks horrible, it but does. he's saying structurally it's, it's okay. Um, the, um, then as far as the lead goes, uh, I think what their, their issue is, they went through and painted so many of these before that was illegal, that if they start going through and, and set a precedent of stripping these and repainting them, they're going to be doing it all over the country, well, <laughs> and they'll go bankrupt. They did over Cincinnati, on all those overpasses that went over the expressway, and he did get lead poisoning because his, hmm. his um, project manager told him there's no lead there. So they demanded that they be tested, and my husband was off the wall. Oh, gosh. And he, he got it really bad. Hmm. He, he had, that's when he had to retire. But I'm just saying that I, I don't know. Can we look into that? Yeah, so, so here was my thought. We, we do, Mr. Hahn actually has um, tests on it that prove that it is lead. Um, if we, if we um, go out with a design contest, nothing says that we have to actually paint the bridge or do anything or even touch the bridge as far as the paint on it. But if we put a facade in front of it, to at that least that stop us from seeing it. Go. You can do that. Dave, mm -hmm. do you remember when I found those those facades as they were selling? I it, but I never did have a legal answer <laughs> <laughs> as to whether you could leave the lead base paint intact and encapsulate it. Because there are some beautiful, you can do that with is, was it fiberglass, Dave? Is that what it was? Yes, I think it was fiberglass. I mean, I did a whole lot of research on it at one time, but, but it, it was pricey. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not going to tell you it wasn't. Right. Well, another facet of this, this meeting that we sat in today was by the Transportation altern Alternatives. They also have grants that are available, and it's the same timeline. And this bridge would, would be a good candidate for that um, with the hazardous material abatement. We could get a grant for that portion of it, and then if we have you know, a design contest, at least get some ideas on what we could do to, to cover it, you know, signage, welcome to Erlanger, whatever it might be on there. Um, but you can get that done. We might erect a statue. How about a committee? Uh, Patty, let's not jump the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go overboard here, Patty. How about a committee? Would anybody volunteer to be a part of that? Uh -huh. or, or is there an existing committee that would make sense? Would this be under revitalization? I would think so. <laughs> yes. Who is, who is that? Sure, it would be. The historical thing. It would be. I know. Progress. It's a timeline. I can't do it. I've got too much going on the next two weeks. Yeah. Well, at least part of the overseeing yeah. of it. Yeah, I sent you some money. Who, who else is on that with you, Corinne? Tom Cahill. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I knew I could. Tom's not here to say no. <laughs> That's right. Cor Corinne and Tom are the um, Progress and Revitalization Committee. <laughs> You're yeah, not getting okay. it. And I don't think I heard Tom object, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. This is the this is the this is the problem with missing a meeting. You can't do a video. Tom Cahill's not here, we'll nominate him. All right. All in favor? Texting him right now. Guys, text him right now, telling him you're not here. Right. He's the new bridge guy. Okay. Okay, okay. So we've got three people there who've said they're interested and um, I think working with um, Dave and, and myself, and I'm sure we can put some people together here for that. Um, I've gotten some property complaints here recently. Um, I've got some emails here, and I don't know if I should even say necessarily what the properties are, but there's uh, one on Delphi and one on Birch. And I know um, um, Tony and Bob, have, chief and assistant chief, have, have um, responded on these. Um, along with Daryl and Mark uh, in, in codes enforcement, 
but it seems like some of these are properties that have been hanging out there for a long time, and it seems like we're having a tough time kind of getting over a hurdle to be able to help some of the people in these subdivisions. Who, wh what would be the committee that would address that kind of stuff? That would be the revitalization. <laughs> is that progress in revitalization? Yeah. Is, don't we have, a, isn't there a housing? What is the housing one? Well. That would be more us though, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Because we, we work with the codes guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I know we haven't, we haven't rescheduled our meeting yet, have we? It's already in foreclosure, but it just covered. Oh, we haven't rescheduled our meeting yet, have we? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Old habits are hard to break. Yeah, I think that is the correct Yeah. One. There's a lot of history to these two that you're talking about, Mayor, that I think we need to probably talk about. Okay. Those two, those two properties before I do think it's the proper place to put them. Yeah. yeah. But there is a lot of, a lot of history. Okay. <laughs> I understand. That we, can, we can bring you up to speed on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. But I, it sounds like yeah. the neighbors are hitting kind of a boil. You boiling. will be very enlightened <laughs> on these two properties. Okay. You're familiar with them. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. The, the one that you were trying to refer to first, I believe, may be kind of new to us. You know, the second one, that, that, that's definitely an old hat. Okay. We, we, <laughs> we've tried a lot of different strategies to, to help that one, but we'll try some. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's another one too. I've gotten some complaints on that. I did get a, um, I got another email too regarding one of the parking violations that happened during the snow removal or one of the snow emergencies. And this is, um, it, I think the, the issue with the, the parking ticket has all been resolved and that's a non-issue, but the, the person has been complaining about other cars that seem to be parked on the street. You know, they said that their street looks more like a tow, a tow yard than, um, you know, than a regular regular street. So I, I did tell him that I would be open to going out and looking at it with him. Um, that is gonna be on Friday evening. I'm gonna go out there and take a look just to um, see exactly what he's, what he's talking about. That's on Carriage Hill. I see Mark back there laughing. Okay. Um, The, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the uh, legal agreement. And as far as we've been trying to put finalized agreements, Jack, did you have something you wanted to? Yeah, I mean, Randy Franklin, we want to disclose this time we'll be agreed to, or we just want to wait, or I mean, I'm going to defer to you guys on this one. I don't see a reason not to talk about it. Okay, who wants to lead that conversation? Frank, you drafted the three contracts. You want to lead the conversation? I'll take a shot at it. Uh, as the mayor indicated, we met on March 5th and March 12th, uh, did not resolve the issues about city attorney. Uh, uh, I think everybody agreed that the uh, mayor needs uh, his own counsel that he can have some confidence and some satis satisfaction with. Uh, we're trying to get there. Uh, we were drafting different versions of three different agreements to get that accomplished. Uh, to be honest with you, I think we're there. We just haven't got them finalized into a form that uh, we can distribute to you. I was hoping to have that done tonight, to be honest with you, but it just uh, just didn't happen. But I think we'll, we're there. And what we intend to do is to finalize those documents, the final tweaks tomorrow, and if it's all right with Mr. Gatlin and the mayor, we'll distribute to them to you by email. And you can chew on them until the next uh, meeting on, in April. Okay. And then you can decide whether you want to agree with them or approve them or not approve them. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think the concept, um, and again, Randy and Frank have been involved in the process. I apologize, more of you have not been involved in the process. Um, it just seemed to have worked out that way. Um, but I think that the concept is, is that you, you basically, uh, a 
other than a few areas, are going to have the same dollar amount for legal services that you've had in the past. The only thing that there will be uh, potential uh, for a difference is that both Frank and I will be attending meetings, okay? But beyond that, beyond that, the, the scope is, is really separated so that my firm and myself in particular will be representing the executive departments and the mayor. Frank will be representing council. Now, that doesn't mean that we're at odds with each other. In fact, you know, Frank and I's goal is that, that we can help maybe even improve communication uh, between the executive branch and council and that we all can work as one. Uh, and then all code enforcement, tax, and all of that stays with Frank's firm. There's no change to any of that. So that's why there's three separate contracts. There's a contract with my firm for the executive side. Uh, there's a contract with Frank's firm for the uh, council side. And then there's a contract with Frank's firm to continue doing the code enforcement and tax work. Uh, a, a tweak that, that changed and we're agreement on, you know, Frank's contract and my contract mirror each other. The dollar amounts, uh, at least for rates, are exactly the same, so there's really no change there. Uh, and there are caps, uh, at least there's a cap on my part of the contract, and I think there's some discussion uh, of also uh, potentially putting a cap on Frank's side so that, again, that total legal bill is more or less the same as it has been in the past. And, and I, I believe Frank and I are comfortable with this. We actually had lunch together today, and I think finalized some of the last portions of it. Uh, the mayor's comfortable with it and it'll be uh, good to go for your blessing. Is that, is that a fair characterization, guys? So that, in other words, yes. it's not going to cost us any more money than it did this past year, correct? That would be the goal. That would be the goal. Mm -hmm. You're close because to we're it. afraid some of our citizens be. are going to get upset. Um, mm -hmm. that, you know, well, we spend an extra money. Yeah. That, um, that's about 90% correct. The 10% that's not correct is Council. What you have to realize, I mean, basically the work is being divided so that work outside of the meetings is not going to be duplicated. You're not going to be getting charged anymore for it. But you have to realize you're going to be having council meetings. You're going to be having committee meetings. You're going to have <coughs> two attorneys at those meetings. So in that concept, your cost is going to go up. But if you've got Counselors at two meetings, you've got counselors that are going to have to be paid. That's all there is to it. But, but in all minimal. fairness, yes, and I don't think I see anyone in the media here. Um, we, our original RFP to the city uh, came in um, with a cap of around sixty thousand um, dollars. Through this agreement, we've now agreed to a cap of around 45,000. So we, we've agreed to trim 15,000 from our <coughs> original cap and our original RFP. Um, I also uh, joked with, with Frank that he has provided the best bargain in Northern Kentucky as far as an hourly rate for someone of his experience. So I think um, I, my, my position would be is that Frank and I both are well below market. So I think you guys would be getting very fair and equitable services. And when you factor in the tax collection and uh, the code enforcement work, which is money that Frank's firm has been returning to the city, you know, your net cost for legal services for both firms is, you know, probably one of the lowest in Northern Kentucky. Mm -hmm. There'll be very minimal difference, so. And their hourly rates probably about 55% of what normally would be paid. Right. I mean, I tried to say it. You said it in a more eloquent way, Randy. Randy would never work for the rich <laughs> Frank and I are working for. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I also want to just say to council, I, I almost feel bad I've been a little bit of ghost. I've intentionally just not tried to get in the middle of all of this. So once all of this is worked out, and approve, assuming it's blessed by everybody, I, I'm anxious to meet everybody uh, and, and get to know everybody. And I apologize, I'm not in green, but I do not have an ounce of Irish in me, so I just <laughs> didn't think about it today. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I, I really didn't have anything else to, to address. Anybody else? Any other comments? Questions? 
All right, can we move to adjourn? See you in April. All right, adjourned. <laughs>